What's good you guys? Psychonaut Vision signing back in once again. It's first time for a long time that we've been both of us two on camera, but we're kind of feeling a little bit of a jolt to get back into YouTube and hopefully consistently upload and just expand our content a little bit. And you know what, what kind of inspired that was our recent trip, our recent magic mushroom experience, an eight gram dose that it, it an ego death experience. That's that's what it was. You know, it was something that we have never experienced before. It was far out, but we're here to tell it today. Yeah, so uh, trip report. We haven't done one of these for yeah, a while. A long time. <laughs> we haven't even collabed for months. Yeah. And we're back now, and hopefully this are, is our first video back out. Hopefully it's not terrible. Uh -huh. So anyways, to start the story, we were sitting down at the breakfast table, eating some mushrooms casually alongside with our egg scramble that we made with mushrooms and garlic and some avocado and some fruit on the side. And I started feeling it about five minutes in already, like head, body numbness, tingling and stuff, you know, the head rushing, like I said. And then all of a sudden I walk outside, I'm like, bro, I'm already seeing stuff move. And, you know, we all lay down for a while. I think all of us had like somewhere the pre come up nausea going on. And we thought that was to come up like, oh, and then we were having so much fun just crawling around and being like animals and yeah. stuff, bro. I was like just making these noise and I, these noises. And I was like, dude, oh, oh, mm, oh, mm. Like making noises like that. And uh, I was like grabbing onto this dude's shoulders and I was grabbing onto my other friend's knees. Shit, I kept talking about masculinity. I kept saying, there are no boundaries. Uh, we're men, we're masculine. We encompass all of it. And like, I felt like in touch with like a primal aspect of myself. I felt primordial and I felt primitive. And I was like, oh, I'm like natural, bro. Like, just doing this animal like shit because that's where we really are at the core yeah dude and for me i would say it took me a little longer than it took for alex for the shrooms to kick in it was probably like 10 to 15 minutes for me but um i just do remember feeling like early on it was a little bit of not nausea but like anxiety and, and just like a feeling of oh god what if this was a mistake but that's always what happens to me with psychedelics but when it did kick in I was already at a point where I was questioning basically existence. And the main thing I was questioning throughout a big portion of the trip was death. Like, what is death and what does it lead to? Does it lead to a new beginning? Does it lead to rebirth? What is it? Or does it lead to nothing? Does it lead to the end? You know, and I was questioning that throughout a, a big portion of the trip. As for the visuals, too, I just remember seeing, like, these... Uh, the colors at first were very vibrant on this, like on this like blanket that was above us. And then after that, man, I started noticing some like morphing effects, some geometric patterns and wavy walls, it looked like and structures and everything. And it was it was obviously very trippy. But man, that was probably the come up for me. And when we got to the peak, bro, like talk about ego death, man, it was probably the most intense experience of my life. I'll let Alex tell his ego death experience first. So it was hard to figure out where exactly i was during this trip and because of that i don't remember who i was or what was going on so it's hard to think of anything in a chronological sense because you know there's no such thing as time you're so in the moment that it, it's really scary because you lose like a physical grasp of reality and that's basically the point i was at and i don't know what happened first or not but i remember just tripping so hard and looking over at Will, and he looked like he was having a bad time. And, and it looked like my other friend over there was just trying to get his breathing under control. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I got bad vibes, bro. Like, bad, 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 bad vibes, bro. Bad vibes, bro. <laughs> Not good vibes, bro. <laughs> like, I feel like we all were saying that. And then, you know, next moment I remember hearing our other friend just vomiting, bro, while we were peeking. And, I was just like, dude, is he, is he vomiting? And, and then I remember him being like, yeah, I, I think he is. And we were just laying there and I turned to Will and I said, I'm really 
really uncomfortable. He's like, I think we all are. And I remember for, I don't know how long I was there. I was there laying down and was just thinking all these wide array of feelings and emotions and stuff I never thought were possible feeling. It felt like almost another reality, another dimension of otherworldly feelings that we can't experience in this third dimension. Yeah, dude. And my uh, ego death experience was the part of the trip that I am able to recollect the best of any moment or stage or phase throughout the experience. Where I start off from this ego death experience is I, I just start feeling like I'm losing grasp of self, I'm losing grasp of reality. And it's like I'm forgetting how to breathe. I remember forgetting how to breathe and almost hyperventilating, or at least feeling like that I was at one point. And then I was trying to find literally any liquid I could find. And our other friend, you know, I was just, I basically was taking all of his, his waters and trying to find anything I could to drink to keep myself de or to keep myself hydrated. And I literally thought I was dying. So I, I was like, what, what do I do? What do I do? I start panicking. I go to my room and pick up like a cinnamon bagel out of my bag that I brought. Cause I'm like, bro, I need something. I need food. And I remember walking back eventually. I remember going, no, when I was in my room, I was literally praying to something, anything to like, keep me going, keep me alive. And then I got up and when I got back out, bro, I started thinking about literally my, my life, my parents, my friends, my, the people who are in my life who are, you know, who mean a lot to me. And I was thinking like, bro, what if this is it? What if this is all coming, coming to an end right here? Like I literally felt like I was process in the process of a death, like a metaphysical death almost. That's what it ended up being because when I eventually sat down, I laid down and let it happen. I was just like this staring up at the ceiling on the ground closing my eyes and it was just like something was being ripped out of me almost surrendering to the experience and when I woke up was when our other friend was throwing up like Alex mentioned and I, I just felt a certain burst of like okay my my friends are also going through a very uncomfortable time but we're going to get through this together and that's when I started being inspired to try and help them and help myself at the same time and after that was when I stopped stopped really thinking as much of self it was more so just Stay so in the moment that I was doing whatever I could to support them as well. That is honorable, my friend. That Thank is you. very honorable. Thank yeah. you, bro. Very, very, very honorable. Yes. Dude, honestly, it's hard for me to talk about it because it was really mind-blowing. I felt absolutely no attachment to any physical reality. Like, it got to the point where I was trying to find stuff to bite on to remind me of reality, but it was like... The more and more I was chipping, the more I felt like I was lost in this other world and I couldn't get out. And yeah. it was starting to get scary and I was like this close to panicking, but I didn't. And I give myself props for not panicking. <laughs> right? But dude, that was probably the most challenging experience I've ever had in my life. And I don't know, I just feel like I can take things on better now, more challenging things. And knowing that, you know, I took on an eight gram shrooms dose that wasn't that easy, to be honest. You mm -hmm. know, we kind of just dove right into it. It didn't really do anything before that. And we did get out in nature and stuff. We did our best, but you can't really prepare for a dose like that. It brings you into another world. Dude, the main thing I took from this experience was brotherhood, though. And like bringing us, bringing one another together, you know, and also that, um, love i had a feeling of love that i've never felt before it was just like this love that wanted to come out and present itself to everyone else and, and i feel like now ever since that trip has come to an end the last few days and it takes a long time i feel like for an experience like this to you know recollect it'll take more than just a few days but i already feel this loving feeling coming out a little bit more and i want to get out get you know extend my comfort zone be more sociable and present myself more around other people you know, that's what I want to try and do and be more comfortable in my own skin. Yeah, I think, you know, it's weird because I feel like taking shrooms, it has an almost like romantic sexual energy. Like, you know, not in the sense like, oh, huggy, kissy, but, you know, in the sense that like you're attracted to yourself and the people that you're with and you're not afraid to say things and you're, you're able to look at the world around you and be appreciative of it, appreciative of the nature. At least that's from my own experience. 
Mm -hmm. It just feels like you romanticize things. Yeah, I feel the same way, dude. Especially, I think, on the, like, the lower doses we've done where we've been out in nature and just, like, on a nostalgic trip, you know, almost. Yeah. Where it just feels, like, so connected and you just realize how much of a spectator you really are. And, you know, it's humbling. It is. Just like this experience, which was definitely humbling. <laughs> I, dude, I remember I, while I was still peeking, I asked for a bite of an apple. I'm... I'm surprised we we're even able to communicate. I think there's I know, there's some points that I think maybe there's a point after that apple where I started to feel slightly like I was going to start coming down. And I started feeling like a brighter energy ahead because I got my ego back partially. You know, and then once the come up really started going and we we're just seeing minor visuals and stuff, then that's when my ego was back and I was able to have a deep conversation with him and our other friend and it was cool just sitting there talking but after a while we we're just like dude we are beat you know we oh, just, dude. i just want this to end we were all exhausted man and we, we, we ended up cooking some mac and cheese that <laughs> was not very good because we half-assed it uh -huh. we just sat there silent the rest of the day because we were just thinking so in awe and we were trying to process everything that happened and we were our brains were fried, bro. I just remember like sitting there, just staring at the ceiling. All of us for like a solid three minutes, we would do that shit. We're just literally just stare and not even fucking like think about it. I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I think it's something that's going to take us a long time to kind of move past. Oh, for was, sure. And I think it was a huge event. I think it'll take time to have everything like process or at least everything that everything to integrate fully into our brains at least. I mean, there's a lot of new ideas and stuff that. I'm thinking about after this trip and it's motivating me and inspiring me to get creative and mm -hmm. you know I don't want to tell everything on this one video so I'm gonna leave a few details out of course yeah. just have to watch some of our other videos yeah. <laughs> but well I feel this creative desire like it, it's like a flame that's being lit once again almost yeah like there's something burning that is sparking the flame for passion like phoenix from the flame <laughs> we rise again you know that's how it feels kind of though I, I feel you bro and we were both in a weird state of mind at one point with like existential crisis and just not really understanding what not knowing what to believe what to latch on to and you know at least it feels like we've had a very deep humbling experience now that has kind of lit that once again and when you kind of forget i mean i forgot i had a girlfriend and a dog like these like these people basically that huh. i'm physically attached to that like you know if they something happened to them i'd be pretty sad and it'd be hard for me to let go so you know chipping like that made me feel a little bit less attached i love them to death of course mm -hmm. but sometimes when you're good in a good place and you know anything could happen you never know how you'll think about it just i feel like I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Yeah. No I'll, matter what. I'll be all right. You know, that's, that's the mindset you got to keep. And, you know, it's easy to create those realities and story arcs in your head of fucking disasters and shit. But we can get through anything. We can definitely get through anything. That's for sure. So that's pretty much all I've had to say for this video. For the most yeah, part. I think that's good for now. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And Psychonaut Vision signing out.